and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. So y'all know when I talk a lot about uh, the things that I can and put in my pantry. Um, you know, growing up, and you grow on a grow up on a homestead that I did most of my life, uh, just like uh, Mr. Brown did too. There wasn't much of going to the grocery store and just buying tons of groceries to take home, put in the pantry. Like we talked about before, you know, we raised everything and uh, canned a lot of stuff and put it up. And the same is for today, even though I don't have a bunch of kids at home anymore, it's just me and Mr. Brown, I still do the same thing that I was brought up to do. You see, homesteading is not just, uh, I think people think homesteading is about farming. And um, homesteading is finding a piece of land, building a home, uh, building a garden, and living sustainable. Being able to homestead that piece of land and uh, make it sustainable. Whether it be that you're just growing a garden or that uh, you've got a milk cow or goat, it doesn't, it, you don't even have to have any animals. You don't have to have chickens, but just about, I'd say every homesteader does have chickens for reason of eggs and for, and for meat. But uh, as far as the pantry and canning dry beans, there's so many reasons why myself and a lot of other people do it. And I've had people comment and say, why do you can dry beans when dry beans uh, will last forever in your pantry? You know, working off the homestead, we're gone. Just like a lot of people, we are gone a lot of hours out of the day. Um, there's sometimes that we're gone 11, 12 hours a day. So coming home and putting on a pot of beans is not feasible. Um, we can do it on the weekend, that's for sure. And I have been cooking dry beans all my life. Big pot of pinto beans or whatever it might be. But uh, there's so many reasons why you would need a jar of canned beans out of your pantry. And we eat a lot of beans. And I'm gonna read a little thing here it's from nutritionfacts.org. And it says, are canned beans as healthy as home-cooked beans? And it says, beans are an essential, essential part of any healthful diet. And they recommend about a half a cup a day of beans, counting them as both a protein and a vegetable. Beans are excellent sources of fiber, folate, plant protein, plant iron, vitamin B1, and minerals such as magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, and copper, and while being naturally low in sodium. But yet Americans don't even know beans. 96% of Americans don't even meet the minimum recommended intake of beans, chickpeas, split peas, or lentils. The same percentage of Americans don't eat their greens every day either. 
Two of the healthiest foods on the planet are greens and beans, but hardly anyone even consumes the minimum recommended amount. Some researchers from the Nas National Cancer Institute noted, this is just another piece added to the rather disturbing picture that is emerging of a nation's diet in crisis. And you know, used to, that's what most people lived on was, was beans and cornbread. I mean, they would have it night after night. It says, in addition to their health benefits, beans are cheap. And the researchers did a little bean counting. And a serving of beans costs between 10 cents. And if you go really crazy, about 40 cents. So the researchers compiled a table of the cost of per serving of beans, both canned and cooked. Canned beans cost about three times more than dried beans, but dried beans can take hours to cook. So many families splurge on canned beans, paying the extra 20 cents a serving. Nutrition-wise, cooked and canned are about the same, but the sodium content of canned beans can be a hundred times more that have cooked. Of course, draining and rinsing the canned beans can get rid of about half the sodium, but you're also draining and rinsing away some of the nutrition. I recommend when buying canned beans to instead get the no salt added varieties and to keep and use the bean juice. <coughs> the bottom line is that beans, regardless of the type or form, are nutrient rich food and should be encouraged as part of any overall healthy diet. So the reason that, you know, I keep, I buy beans in bulk. And so I've always got a lot of pounds of beans that are put back. And then beans will last me forever. But I can my own beans. And I'll tell you why. Because I want my pantry to look like this. And not like this. My canned beans taste better. They've not uh, got any kind of other preservatives or chemicals in them. Um, and I just, I feel better about them. They're my own canned beans and they do save money. I don't run to the store when I'm making chili or taco soup or um, even if me and Mr. Brown come in one night and we just want a little bowl of brown beans. I can't say, well, I can't do it because I don't have time. We just got home and it's seven o'clock and time for supper, you know. I can open up a jar of my own canned pinto beans. We eat a lot of beans and uh, everybody should. Um, so, you know, the understanding of, tr of trying to understand why a lot of us can our own dry beans. Um, saves money, especially if you've already got your own jars. You're not buying jars to do it with, but you got to start somewhere. And it's just, it's just a better bean all around. And you've seen all the beans that, uh, from the thumbnail from, from my pictures that, you know, if my pantry's getting empty, it's time for me to can up at least two canner full of beans. And I did 36 jars, and I'll do it again here pretty soon, and my pantry will be good for the winter. It should be. And I won't be going to the store and paying the money to buy store-bought beans for any reason, because um, I'll have them right here. And when I run out, I've got bulk bags of beans that I'll just refill my pantry with and it keeps me out of the grocery store. So I hope that helps y'all understand it just a little bit more. Canning your own dry beans is a good thing and uh, I think it's good for my family. So we're going to can up some dry beans. So anybody that's never canned up any dry beans, y'all hang around and uh, it's not a very long video to show you how to, to can dry beans. 
It's one of the easiest things you can do. In fact, I, I always say if that's one of the first things you ever can, can dry beans because it's that easy. You know, so you can um, pretty much can any dry bean. You can uh, from anywhere from northern beans, pinot beans, black beans, red beans, lentils. I mean, just anything, any kind of bean that you love and that you use from your pantry daily or just uh, weekly, monthly, whatever. If you know twice a month that you make a big pot of chili, you know what beans that take. If you make... Um, like I do, I like making baked beans from scratch, and I use white beans for that. Um, when I make uh, taco soup, I use several kinds of different beans, from pinto beans, red beans, and black beans. So, and there's just so many recipes that we use that cost for beans, and it's very healthy for you. And for nine pints, for nine pints of beans, you're going to need about three and one-fourth pounds of dry beans. For about seven quart jars, you're going to need about five pounds of dry beans. So that's just a give or take there. So anyways, I hope I explained myself well enough. Uh, uh, canning your own beans is a good thing, like I said. So let's get started and let's can some beans. these are going to be some of the beans that I'm going to be uh, canning today. These are the beans that, besides what I've already got in my pantry, I've got purple hole peas, fresh purple hole peas from the garden that I put up already, and y'all seen the video on that. And let's see, I'm out of pinto beans, black beans, red beans. I've got a few uh, cannellini beans left. I have no lentils left, and this one right here is a new one. And I ordered these. These are good mother stallion beans. I've never even eaten them before. If I have, I don't remember. But I wanted to try them because I've done some research on them, and they, they're just a, a really good, nutritious bean. And um, they say this is a good, hearty, meaty bean. And it makes really good veggie burgers. Now, <laughs> y'all know that Mr. Brown and I are not vegetarians, but I will be doing some, trying some veggie burgers because it really does interest me. And uh, it's a good source of protein. It's a good way to, uh, well, if you're low on meat or you need to really ration your meat or anything like that. This would be a, a good bean, so, of course, you can make veggie burgers out of, you know, just regular black beans, but they say this is just a heartier, meatier bean, so we're going to be trying them. So I think what I'm going to get in the canner first is some red beans. If you're not able to get out and do any shopping right now, you can shop online, get it shipped to your house. You can shop online with Walmart or uh, anybody like that you can um, I'm a big uh, supporter of Thrive Market they have all kinds of organic beans dry beans and anything you need and it'll come right to your house some of these let's see this right here is from Azure standard so I got them on my last haul which has been a while um, I think these three come from Amazon. For sure these, my black beans did too, and even my lentils. And of course these beans right here did too, but these right here came from Sam's Club. So, and I've got tons and tons and tons of dry beans. But I need to get some of these canned and put on the, on the shelf for everyday use. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is to look through your beans and make sure there's no kind of debris or anything like that in them, no bugs or nothing. And then you just want to wash and rinse them really good. And I'm just rinsing them in cold water. 
And then I'm going to let them sit here and dry in just a little while. Okay, we are going to do this. And we're not going to make this a long, drawed out process because canning dry beans is one of the easiest things you can do. And I don't want this to be intimidating to our new canners because the more you draw things out, the more intimidated they get. <laughs> you, it just blows, and I'm the same way. If it just keeps continuing to, and, and it looks like this long, drawn out process, that you just start losing me. So, we're gonna get this done really quick. It's easy. You see where I, uh, I had two pounds of red beans. Right here, I had 22 ounces of my, uh, let's see, now I done forgot what they're even called. Here I am messing up. Good mother salyard beans, yes. I had 22 ounces of those and 22 ounces, uh, done six pints, uh, two pounds done, two, four, six, eight, ten pints of red beans. And now I'm just taking the last two pints and just putting a half a cup of pinot beans in the last two. So I've got a half a cup of dry beans in each one of these pint jars. And that's our first step. They're just clean. The beans are not, they're just, they've not been soaked. I don't do the overnight soak method at all because to me it makes a mushy bean. I just don't like it. So dry beans out of the bag, been washed, sorted through. Here we go. The jars are not hot. My water's not hot in my canner yet. And the water that we're going to put in the jars is not going to be hot. It's just room temperature. And what this does is once we put our jars in here, I will turn my burner on. And I will bring the water that's in the canner, the jars, and the water that's in the jars. They're all going to come up to temp at the same time. They're going to be processed. The pints is 75 minutes and quarts is uh, 90 minutes. So... This is the method I use because I've been doing it for many years and the beans come out great. If, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, and a lot of people do it and I'm not saying nothing bad about it, but for my taste and what I like is uh, I don't like a real mushy bean. A lot of times on the bottom of your jar you'll have mushy beans about a half an inch. So I choose not to soak them. This method works great for me. So anyways, we got our half a cup of dry beans, your choice, in a pint jars. And I'm doing pints because that's all it takes for me and Mr. Brown. Especially when I'm making things like uh, taco soup, chili, different, uh, just different uh, dishes, different casseroles. Uh, if I want to open up a jar of black beans to make, uh, uh, say, cowboy caviar or... If I just want it in a burrito bowl or just anything, pint jars, I can always open two pints. So I always choose to do pints anymore. Now, if the kids were all here, the house, I'd do quarts. So now I'm going to take, I really don't need this. I'm just going to do a half a teaspoon of salt in each pint. You put a teaspoon, I put a teaspoon in my quartz, you can leave the salt out. I like putting just a little bit of salt in there. And that's one of the things that we read early is that uh, you can control your salt intake when you do your own beans. Do you need the salt? Now I'm using canning salt, but you don't have to. You can use your, your pink Himalayan salt, uh, kosher salt, sea salt. Uh, I just always have canning salt on hand, so that's just what I what I use. So we got our half a teaspoon in there. I'm gonna put my I'm tangled up here. And I'm gonna try to do this without making a mess, and I don't promise nothing. And I'm just gonna start pouring my my water in here, and I'm leaving. I'm going to leave a half an inch headspace. And it's because your beans, they like to swell up, of course. Some of them do it worse than others. And there's some people that won't put but a fourth of a cup 
of dry beans and to me it's just not enough even if the beans swell up quite a bit i'd still rather have a half a cup of beans in my pint jars I think when I started canning beans, the rule of thumb was a half a cup to a pint jar. And I would come out with pints that just didn't have very many beans in there, and I just got so frustrated with it. And uh, so I started putting half a cup. Now, there are some beans that you need to do a fourth, and that would be lima beans. They swell up quite a bit. So I'm going to finish filling my jars up, half a head, half an inch head space, whoops, I'll take some of that water out, and I'm going to get me some more water, and we're just about done. So I'll come back when I get all these full. Now we got the water in all of our beans. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of like debubble them. And I've done all these, but I'm going to do this last one. I just What I did is I just kind of stirred it around like this. Now I've had people ask me if they can put like a ham, something like that, in here with them. Um, you can do quart jars. If you do your beans in your quart jars because your meat will cook, your meat needs to can 90 minutes and so does a jar, quart jar of beans. So yes, if you're doing quart jars, yes, you can put some ham in it. You can put some different seasonings in here too. You can put some jalapenos. You can put garlic, stuff like that in it. I choose to kind of leave mine alone most of the time because I can always, when I'm cooking and using them, I can always season them the way I want to. So now what we're going to do, now that we debubbled them, we're going to clean the rims. I got some vinegar right here. And these shouldn't be too, too awfully bad. There's nothing sticky or anything on them. You know, I like canning uh, quite a few of my either navy beans or cannellini beans because I use white beans in a lot of recipes. During the winter, we eat uh, white chicken chili. And uh, I use, when I go all out and make really homemade baked beans from scratch all the way, I use white beans, navy beans. And I've just got, I got several recipes that call for white beans. And sometimes we just like to, to open a jar up and make some cornbread and eat us a little bit of white beans when we come in from work. Because like we talked about, you know, especially in the wintertime, me and Dean's gone so many hours at work. And you come in and you still got chores to do on the homestead and it's just getting later and later and later. I don't have half a day to cook beans. So it just don't work that way with us. So I've got my lids right here and I've got them in warm water. I don't have them in hot boiling water, but if you choose to do that, that's your choice. They've been cleaned and sanitized. And we're going to put them on our, on our jars. So, so far, if you're watching and you've never canned dry beans, you can see it's an easy process. I don't want to just go through it and not explain enough to you, but still, again, I don't choose to <laughs> drag it on either. Whoops, because I want you to see how it is not complicated. We talked about the benefits of canning your own dry beans. And like I've said, I have v pounds and pounds of dry beans that I do keep in storage for cooking when I just want, if I have time, or for emergency reasons, I have them. Just like I do rice and all that other stuff. But, okay, we're going to take our rings now, 
and we're going to put them on the finger tight now if y'all watch me y'all i've got arthritis in my fingers so when i say finger tight my tight's going to look different probably than y'all's because i can't put a lot of strength into my fingers so i know people have said well you look like you're really putting them on tight but i'm really not it just looks like that i have to use the inside of my hand i can't really be safe about it and just do it with my fingers now when i get done canning all the beans that i'm going to can and i showed y'all at the beginning what i'm going to start with we're going to come back and we're going to look at all everything that we've canned and i want y'all to think about <clears throat> before you start canning dry beans what what are the beans that y'all use most most of the time from your pantry what kind of recipes do you use them in what if you come in from work even if you just work on the homestead and you don't work off the homestead you're still working and you come in and uh you just you want to open up a jar of your own canned beans whether it be pinto whether it be white beans black beans red beans uh lentils whatever they might be that's what you need to can and put it on your in your pantry um uh, the reason i can a few lentils is because i use it in a lot of my soups and when i come in i don't always accept maybe on one day a week which is saturday that I can really put half a day or a whole day into cooking a big pot of something. So I don't have that every day. I have to come in and do the best I can do to put a decent meal on the table from stuff that we have uh, grown, preserved, or canned. Um, and it's not store-bought except the beans are store-bought but you know what I'm saying it's not went through all the process of that they go through when they're commercially canned you're saving money I mean we've done all the, the talking about that but uh, I'd rather look in my pantry and see a pantry full of my own canned beans than I would when store-bought beans and they taste so much better okay I, I still don't have my burner on because I'm going to go ahead and put my jars in there now if the water in pot was hot I'd have to use my my lifter but it's not You know it's going to be before you know it it's going to be cooler weather and uh, i start getting a little excited really i do because i love fall and because we can when it gets cold enough we can start firing up the wood cook stove and even mr brown loves doing that too so in my 23 quart canner i've got nine jars down there and this is going to be what separates your jars and you're going to put it down on top of those jars and then you're going to put the rest of your jars there's three quarts of water in the bottom of my canner So we're going to put our lid on always make sure i like to look through my little steam valve there i like to hold it up to the light and if you can't see through it you need to take a, a something to clean it out i usually use a toothpick or something but uh, we're going to put the lid on and i think this is the wrong lid 
think this goes to my smaller one. I'm coming back. No paper going, Lori, get your stuff together. Okay, so I'm gonna have to turn this around. Let me turn my pot around. I had to, this lid right here goes to this camera. So, we got the lid on. And I've already been canning with this one, so I know it's okay. So it's on there. Everything looks good. So now I'm gonna turn my burner on. And I've got it on my, my front uh, dual burner. Not dual, but my, my biggest burner. And I'm gonna have it on about medium high. And I'm gonna bring it up to pressure and then it'll start steam and start coming out of this. And then I'll time it for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, we will start timing it for 75 minutes. So I hope y'all understood if you've never canned green beans so far, and we're not done yet. Um, I hope it don't intimidate you. Like I said, it's one of the easiest things you could do. I always say for new canners, the easiest things to can is dry beans, green beans. That's good. That's things really easy to start with. So. To me, it's even easier than <laughs> than jam or jelly because sometimes they don't want to set up. I don't care how good you are, but uh, so we're going to let that come up to pressure and then we'll be back. Well, about messed up, forgot to show y'all. <laughs> They've been steaming for ten minutes, and uh, we put our thingamajiggy on there. Lost my mind again, you know. Brain cells are getting dead, I guess. So now we're going to let it come up to pressure, 10 pounds of pressure. And when it does, we will time it for 75 minutes for pints, 90 minutes for quarts. Pressure gauge. <laughs> what happens when you start getting old? Okay, after 75 minutes, here we are. We turn the burner off, let it set another hour. To let the pressure come down then you take your gauge off and you lift your lid away from you very carefully and then you remove your jars and i i done two canner full so i ended up with 36 pints of different kinds of beans that we use just about every day in the winter time so i hope y'all understood and y'all liked this video on canning dry beans it's a good thing so y'all try it. We'll see you in a couple of days. God bless.